Hello and welcome to the LeadsRx Attribution Marketing Channel, where we help businesses, brands, and entrepreneurs get more out of their advertising spend. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about the nine performance marketing trends that you need to be aware of that are gonna set you up for success in the back half of 2021. If you're not already aware, you really need to be paying attention to this number one most important trend, and that is the deprecation of third-party cookies. This is all the buzz right now across the entire online advertising industry, and it's going to affect all of us. If you haven't seen the video yet, please click the link in the description and go watch the full 20-minute episode. You used to be able to tell Google or ask Google and Facebook, hey, I want you to show ads to somebody who looked at this product page last week but didn't buy. And we wanna be able to track them as they go around the internet so that we can show them this display ad and bring them back to my store with a 20% off coupon or something like that. That is going to be much, much harder to do in the future. The ability to track across domains is going to be limited and your ability to track across browsers will also be limited and the time in which those third-party cookies get to live is going to be drastically reduced from what everybody is used to. It's not the end of the world, the sky's not falling, but some of the KPIs and campaign types that you used to rely on that would drive positive ROAS might need to change. The quick solve for this, and it's easier than most people think, is that you need to be collecting your own data, your own first party data. You need to be serving first party cookies on your website, not a third party cookie from some ad tech vendor or Google or Facebook or whatever, you need to have your own first party data and control all that on your side of the fence because you can no longer rely on those third parties to give you that bulletproof accurate tracking. Instead of leaving it up to Facebook and Google to remember who's been on what page, you should be thinking about how you can capture those users, get them to self-identify, register with an email address, leave their name and phone number, opt in for something, but you need to capture that person on your site while they're there and be building your own first party ecosystem. I don't care if you're selling bicycles or t-shirts or million dollar enterprise software packages, this applies to you. You need first party data, you need to know who's who on the website, and you need to do your best to give them a quality experience because you can't rely on those third party cookies this is a big one, folks. Don't overlook it. Get a plan in place because it's already underway. Nothing's gonna change it and you need to be ahead of the curve, not behind it. That's point number one. Our second trend is that companies and vendors are going to start to form sort of trusted ecosystems amongst themselves. So if you consider a aggregate site, say something like Zillow that aggregates properties, it aggregates real estate agents and brokers, and it tries to put forth a product that consumers use to find information about real estate and housing and hire uh, real estate professionals to help them with their houses. You need to be able to work with, if you're the advertiser, if you're the realtor, if you're Zillow, everybody wants to share that data. And so if Sally the realtor is running advertising campaigns or paying Zillow for ads, then you're gonna expect Zillow to be able to report back on how well those ads did. Well, how is Zillow gonna know how well Sally's ads performed if they don't know if the person met with Sally or if the person bought a house or if the person took any action besides just clicking on the link? They won't because after they click on Zillow and they maybe go over to, to Sally's website, Zillow no longer has that information. We believe that the trend will be for ecosystems to develop in particular industries so that Data can be shared between the parties and both parties that are working together to achieve the same goal, which is to target home buyers and to help people make real estate transactions. Both Zillow and the real estate agent is, is generally in this, the same game to try to achieve that. They're gonna start working together to make their own trusted ecosystem that they can share and rely on independently of Facebook, Google, or, or the other ad networks. If you're advertising there or if you're working um, in an industry that operates in this way, you should be asking those websites what their plan is, how it's gonna work in the future. Trend number three is that the ad networks and people who are generally in the space of providing advertising and media back to people who buy media are going to be acquiring a variety of businesses. You've already seen this taking place from Verizon and Comcast and Google and Facebook and ZoomInfo and LiveRamp, 
all these players are essentially gobbling up smaller other players that have data sets on consumers because we can't again rely on Google or Facebook to just show our ads to men in Cleveland who like bicycles. There's going to be more and more challenging and if you can acquire those and merge them together you can start to achieve some of that same level of hyper focused targeting that was available to you with third party cookies. So in this third trend you're going to start to see a lot more acquisitions take place you're really gonna start to see a shifting landscape of who's able to even offer a value proposition of being able to provide accurate attribution, at accurate return on ad spend, or accurate targeting. So as these rules continue to shift and as governments around the world continue to defend consumer privacy, you're going to see the big players out there gobble up smaller players in order to stay competitive and stay ahead of those changes. Trend number four, getting away from these cookie implications, you'll find the fourth trend on this list is the explosive growth of essentially emerging media. Given the effects of the pandemic, everybody's consuming a lot more digital content, spending a lot more time online, and you can see that across the various platforms that offer online content. So. TikTok advertising might have been a very niche idea 18 months ago. Now it's highly relevant. It's an extremely popular platform that's only gained significantly in popularity over the past year. Instagram and Facebook have rolled out Reels as a direct competitor and as a direct sort of content alternative to what TikTok's doing. It's essentially the exact same thing. Snapchat's doing it. And so you see emerging media and emerging ad networks are going to start playing a bigger and bigger role in our opinion because you can start to reach new sets of eyeballs. Same point but little different angle on it is podcasts and streaming. Podcasts are not going anywhere. The audio channel and medium is continuing to gain in popularity. The barriers to entry to get into podcasts are so low that everyone's going to be doing podcasts this is really the, the YouTube wave that happened, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. This is now the podcast wave. A quick point just to tie it into some of the other trends. Think about what Spotify is doing. Spotify now controls the content, right? Because they have, they're the world's largest audio platform. So they have the musicians' songs and they have everybody opted in to a first party ecosystem on the mobile app, on the website. For sure, that's Bob logged in. And so if the advertiser wants to reach Bob, they can by targeting Bob on the first party network that is Spotify. That is not how Spotify worked two years ago. That's not how any of these things worked two years ago. People used to rely on the ad, big ad networks, Facebook and Google, primarily Google to serve up those display ads and monetize your traffic. It's gonna make your targeting more accurate and you're probably gonna get more bang per dollar spent. So go check that out. Trend number Five, broadcast folks, TV, radio, and people that are in broadcast media, you cannot get away with web lift anymore. So I think you've seen a ton of progress on the digital side and radio and TV have made also a ton of progress on tracking the performance. You can't just look at website visits after you run your ad or after you do a mailer campaign. You really need to start looking at the true performance you have to measure the conversions coming from your site. That's where the future's going. That's where the competitive dollars are going. Web lift is not enough. You need to be tracking your conversions. If you're a broadcaster, you need to be passing those conversions back into your data set and your MarTech stack so that which ads are performing better, which regions are performing better, daytime, offer, is it better if it's host read or if you provide the audio, all those different things. Believe it or not, folks, if you buy a new Samsung or a new Toshiba or anything with a little tiny logo that says ACR, it's reading the pixels on your screen. So if you're watching the Super Bowl and a Coca-Cola ad comes up, the TV knows to look for the logo of Coca-Cola and will fire off a little ping back to the server, to the Coca-Cola advertisers of the world to say, this ad was shown on this TV with this IP address at this time. You need to be utilizing some of these new mechanisms and get beyond web lift. It's not going to cut it. Trend number six, 
you need to have a direct consumer strategy. This is a little passe, maybe old hat if you will, but if you don't have a direct consumer strategy at this point, you're, you might be dead in the water. The old model of producer goes to distributor, to wholesaler, to retail, to the consumer, all that margin in the middle that's going to all those participants is now being captured by the original producer and they're saving all that money going direct to consumer and cutting out the middleman. You need to be doing as a business is working on your direct consumer strategy and it's not just marketing. It's not just what's the offer, what does the creative look like. I'm talking about the data strategy of who's who and tracking your customers and converting these folks. You need to be able to know who they are, what their email is, and 12 months from now, be able to pull from your own resources, the hundreds of thousands of people that are customers, the millions of people that are prospects, and the even more people that are just been poking around on your website. If you don't have this funnel built out, you are reliant upon a very select few customers in the distribution or wholesale space. If I were you and you're in that space, you need to go talk to the consumer and know everything you can about them and give them a fantastic experience. That's probably what you're missing. You probably overlooked what the customer experience is because that's not your problem. Somebody else down the line handles that. False. That's your logo on the product. That's your negative review online or Better Business Bureau, not the distributor. You need to care about that experience, care about that customer and bring them back into your universe so that you can market and talk to them and improve what you have going on. Trend number seven, all types of new methodologies and you got media mix modeling, you have identity graphing, customer journey mapping, all these special words that are all just trying to do the same thing, which is find out what's working and what's not so you can put money into what's working and kill the things that are not. What we would caution um, any marketer advertiser is to not be distracted by the, the shiny object syndrome. What you have working today, if it's consistent and reliable and you're happy with it, needs to be modified, not scrapped. There isn't a magic formula out there or a, math, a magic methodology, all right, that's gonna make it any better for you. The, the root word still is attribution. How you go about attributing your conversions to the marketing programs that generate them can be accomplished in a few different ways, but that's still the question that we're asking here. That's still the root of the problem. So incrementality and some of these other methodologies might seem awesome and they're worth considering and they work for, for some organizations, but for most people they won't. For most people it's still about how do I get more people on my site? prospects, how do I convert those people with a great experience and something, value, or turn them into leads, how do I farm these leads and turn them into customers. It's the same game, it's the same funnel. You don't need to throw the funnel away and get a big apparatus going to answer the same question. You just need to have accurate data, clean data, and keep your eye on the prize, which is attributing those conversions to the marketing channels that produce them and getting the most and getting more of your money into those channels. Trend number eight is that a lot of these tools, Mar MarTech tools that you've been using in the past that are what we call point solutions, right? They only offer one slice of the equation. So if you wanna know how your podcasts are doing, you can get one of 50 different podcast attribution tools, podcast download trackers, podcast performance reports, that's fine. They're not gonna know how well your Facebook ads are doing. They're not gonna be able to tell you if the Facebook ad led to the podcast episode, led to the e-commerce, e-commerce led to the sale. It's not what they do. They're gonna show you downloads and impressions, the time of day, and they're gonna give you some cool charts. And that's great, but that's a point solution. And marketing today is not that linear. You're using omni-channel. Anyone with a significant budget is deploying ad spend across multiple channels and trying to be everywhere at the same time to give that consumer the experience that they want and bring them back to make a sale. So these point solutions that you might be paying for are either gonna go away entirely because their value proposition is being eroded or they're gonna be free. And so these point solutions that just do one thing like tracking websites or tracking podcast downloads are going to become free 
or they're going to go away entirely or someone else will acquire them. So you should be looking for a set of tools that have some durability. They're gonna make it through this transition. Don't be married to uh, multiple point solutions that answer your big complicated question all with third-party data. It's not gonna fly. It's, it's just not gonna work. The reporting, the accuracy is gonna go way down and A won't talk to B and B won't talk to C. You're gonna be scratching your head wondering what happened uh, to the insights that you were looking at maybe last year. So get ahead of that and don't be caught up as a victim there. You can't get away with just point solutions, especially if they're free. You tend to get what you pay for and if you have a significant budget, it becomes very worthwhile to invest in the right tools to make that happen. I alluded to this, but trend number nine is that other vendors are basically gonna start offering bolt-on attribution reporting to what they have already. So if you use a podcast download tool, they're gonna have a new report that says, attribution, learn about your conversions. Okay, let's silo, that, that's gonna answer the question. If someone listened to the podcast today, and clicked on the link in the description or something, came to the site and then bought the item all within 10 minutes. Maybe that shows up in your, your podcast tracking tool with a little bolt on attribution. So what you need to do to stay ahead of this is make sure that you really have an omni-channel, multi-touch attribution tool that can listen to TV, radio, podcast, Facebook, Google, bus benches, and everything in between. If you are an omni-channel marketer, then every one of your advertising experiences, we call them touch points, is basically linked together. A customer's journey is never here, here. It's here to here, wait, then back over here, then I used a VPN, then I asked my friend about it, then I'm here, then I opened the email, now I converted for the download, or opened another email, and now I converted. If you are not tracking across all of those channels, simultaneously and netting out the result, you're gonna reach false conclusions. And oftentimes in marketing, a false conclusion is even worse than a gut feeling because marketers are intuitive, we're creative, we're numbers people, some of us are, but you're able to find out that, you know what, Facebook's doing this month, Google's doing well this month, you can infer it from the data. But if you want bulletproof data that actually says scientifically for every dollar spent on Facebook, you get $2 in return, but for every dollar spent on Google, you get $2.50 of return. You're not gonna be able to answer that on a hunch. And that delta in your return on ad spend might be worth millions and millions of dollars depending on what your scale is. If you are able to measure all your advertising spend across all the channels, emerging media, broadcast, old stuff, new stuff, Google, Facebook, if you're able to measure all that, and to have first party data on your site when people get there and opt in. And you're able to pass back to the MarTech stack, your attribution tool, all of the conversions throughout the whole funnel, not just the email sign up and not just the signed contract at the beginning, but all the various conversion points as people migrate through to that final sale. If you're able to capture both of those things, you are gonna be in a great position to crush your advertising results all throughout 2021 and beyond. If you have any questions on any of these topics or these trends and how you can future-proof your marketing success, please click the link below and sign up for a free, no obligation demo of LeadsRx. And we are going to show you precisely how you can revolutionize your marketing and crush your return on ad spend in 2021 and beyond. This is the Attribution Marketing Channel, signing off.